Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Miss Lion's channel. Hey guys, and welcome to another week. Remote sauce, remote sauce. It's not quite normal sauce, let me tell you. It's weird, and I'm still getting used to it. Um, how's everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing really good and enjoying the beautiful sunshine and just rolling with the new kind of normal with um, remote learning. I'm definitely still getting used to the remote teaching aspect, I'll let me tell ya. But at least I'm learning a ton and having a great time and I'm having a lot of turnout, which I'm so excited that you guys have been diligent and enjoying the projects that I've been throwing out there to you. So let's get started. Let me just quickly roll backwards and kind of go through the pages that I have not um, gone over. So I believe we went through page three, the TP time. So I haven't shown you the page four, meditation or repetition. Page five, the letter to BFF, which is your self. And page six, the sticky page, our media exploration. Oh yeah, that one definitely got some stickies going down. And page seven, current mood collage, and really hitting it home with those um, designs around your collage is really going to make it look kind of, give it that cohesive finished appearance. And then we have page eight, positive and negative space. So we drew our shape as positive space and wrote in those positive aspects of our life. And then the negative space, we jot down all those annoying negative things that are going down right now. Going down right now. Okay, page nine. We have prehistoric art with our fingerprint stamp collage and then our weak hand drawing a message to your friends. There's my message to my cronies. And page 10, we have our ancient art. I drew one of my favorite coffee mugs and I did some stipling pointillism to represent the coffee that I drink every morning. And we have page 11, Renaissance art, Renaissance art, excuse me, and the imaginary animal. Whoa, crazy looking uh, face there with the turtle shell and the ladybug wings and my gecko feet turned out pretty smashing. I will say my markers are not my favorite. They bleed and it's kind of hard to use detail with these fat guys. Mm, so I don't totally recommend them. I went back to my Sharpies by the weasel. Okay, page 12, drama, Baroque art. What's drama in your house? You can get, you guys pretty much can see what the drama is in our house. <laughs> yeah, page 13, enlighten us with neoclassical art. So here's my message I have to the world. Yes, so true. You gotta love yourself before you love the others around you, okay? Because if you can't love yourself, you can't love others. Anyway, moving forward. We're going to move into page 14, 15, 16, 17 this week. Yay, everybody. Miss you guys like crazy. It's too weird. It is what it is. All right, page 14. Here we go, we're starting with page 14 and we're gonna move right into Impressionism. Now Impressionism and on to the present day are like seriously some of my favorite styles of artwork. And, um, and so once we've reached this point on, oh my gosh, I just love exploring all the artists and all the different techniques because they are so rad. Okay, so beginning with Impressionism, write that down. Um, Impressionism time period was another revolution in art and they really, what they were trying to convey during this time period is immediate visual sensations, um, through color and light. Okay. They were rejecting all the rules of the Renaissance art period of like the perspective and um, balance composition and things like that. They're like, forget that. You don't need that to create good art. Um, so what we're going to do for this project is you guys are going to create an optical mixing activity. So we're going to write that down. Our optical mixing 
mixing activity. T V T. Okay, what in the world is optical mixing? Well, optical mixing came from Claude Monet. And what he did was he made not like um, actual like round spots or dots, but more loose spots of different colors. And so when you stepped back about 10 feet, those two colors would melt together to create a different shade. Okay, so say he had like red and yellows together kind of overlapping loose strokes. When you'd back way up, they would look orange. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to be drawing a flower or a plant. So you can actually go get a flower or sit outside and draw the flower straight up on the plant, or you can actually have like a potted plant in front of you, or you can use your device, okay? I am going to quickly go grab a flower outside, and so I'm gonna demonstrate that. Um, so I'll be right back, okay? I'm gonna run. Coming back here. Okay. All right. So I have my yummy jasmine. Don't eat it. It smells amazing though. Okay. And so I'm going to use this plant as my inspiration here for this piece of artwork. And so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to be using, you can use markers for this, um, but I'm going to use paint. If you have paint, that would be awesome because it's a little bit looser with the strokes. And, um, and so that will, I don't know, it's very loose with um, Impressionism. Okay, so here we go. I have my flower tacked onto my paper, and I'm going to use acrylic paint. Now, I don't have that much acrylic paint yet uh, left, so I just kind of grabbed the random colors that I have a little bit of. So I'm going to go ahead and blobby blob. Blob to the blob, 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 blob. Boom. You guys are used to me being long-winded by now. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that long-winded in the classroom, though, as you know. Well, sometimes I am, but I try not to be, because this is not my favorite thing to do, is sit in front of you and blabber ba blabber All right? It's just not. I mean all likey. Okay, so I have these three colors so far, and then I have white. I'm really running low on everything, actually. But I have some house paint here. <clears throat> so I'm going to... I'm actually going to use some house paint because I need white. All right. Okay, so you're welcome to use um, a brush for this project. Again, paint, brush, or you could go with markers. And you could also go with watercolor. I'm okay with that too. Um, and a brush. Although, I will say that um, during this impressionistic time, sometimes... Um, other, where's my lid? Sometimes other items were used as brushes to create an interesting stroke on your page, okay? So I am not going to go with the, um, what's it called? I'm, not, I'm gonna check my notes, because I'm drawing a blank. I'm not gonna go, you're probably reading my mind, traditional. Okay, wake up, lady. Remember what you taught. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to go with a non-traditional brush. <laughs> I'm going to use a toothbrush. Why? I don't know. Just because. I want to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my paint, and I'm going to, um, you could use a Q-tip as well, by the way. That's another thing I wanted to mention. Or a brush, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to communicate your emotions as you're painting on your paper. Okay, are we going for realism? No, we're not. Okay, we're going for um, colors and and mixing colors together on the page. Um, and you're going, it, it can look, it's going to look semi like what you're trying to convey, but it's not gonna be completely abstract. But you're going just for the emotions that you're feeling as you're painting your strokes on the paint, on um, to the paper. Now, um, I will say, um, Claude Monet, he, um, 
he when he was doing all these paintings by the way people kind of at first rejected his art they're like what is that i mean that's like that's like not really that skill i mean you're just like kind of like blah, 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 you know so um it was a little controversial at first and then people started to really kind of um then they later started to really kind of capture his style and it became quite phenomenal and popular um other things that I noticed with, uh, or what I would, when I was reading about him is certain types of strokes would convey a certain type of emotion and then certain other strokes would convey a different emotion. So um, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I don't even have the exact colors, but I'm just going to first start with that flower kind of hiding in there. Ew, there's a hair in my brush. That's weird. Okay. Do, 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 do. Now, could you do this? If you're like loving this project, this activity that's in your CQJ, could you actually do this on a canvas? Yes! Okay, I'm trying to inspire you, my people, to get creative on your own, okay? Um, and so if that means breaking up, breaking out a canvas, dude, do it, do it. Okay, and the, mm-hmm. Flowers coming down like that. I'm doing this little spot right here. Now, am I going to paint this whole thing? No, I'm not. But I want to kind of show you the idea. Now, what's my mood right now? Oh, I'm a little frazzled, I'll be honest. A <laughs> little frazzly dazzly. Um, just got a lot going on. It's like a lot going on, but nothing going on. It's so strange. Oh my gosh. Okay, so my, my strokes are a little like fra frazzly. Okay, frazzle dazzle. Oh, speaking of frazzle dazzle, that's one of my favorite My Little Pony songs. My Little Pony last series, been totally digging it. Yes, I know, I'm weird. I guess I, I know I do like My Little Pony. Okay, so here's my uh, flower. Oh, I forgot one petal. Okay, and again, we're going for a melt of different colors on top of each other so that when you step back, they become one different color here. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item, I am going to add just a little hint of this yellow. I don't even have a water cup right now. Don't even have a water cup, water cup. Here we go, that's the little, little thingy coming out. You guys, I don't know the anatomy of flowers. Ah. Okay, moving right along now for the little buds here of flowers coming up. Okay. I'm making these little V's kind of. Now, does it look like the flower yet? No! It doesn't. But I'm representing the color and light and my emotions that I'm feeling right now. Okay, I'm gonna slowly work that on. I do have some green that I kind of wanna just go for right now, just because I'm having capital F-U-N. And, you know, if this continues next year, you guys, I will definitely have uh, a combination of um, live classes and uh, the YouTube channel. Just so you know um, what's coming down the way, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with next year, but um, definitely, if we're going to continue this remote thing, then I will definitely be having some live classes. Um, and so just so you know, if you're like, oh, I miss live classes with Miss Lions. Okay, I'm going to move into a brush right now because I didn't bring, I don't have a water cup because I wasn't prepared. And I'm going to now draw in some of the leaf here. And again, it's these, these strokes with different varieties of color. Yellowish green to green. Yellowish green to green. Okay. I'm feeling a lot better right this moment now that I'm in the groove of my lesson with you guys because you guys know how much I love art. All right. So I'm adding a little white in there and a variety of color so that later when we step back far away 
you will see the color kind of melt as one vibrant green, one interesting light pink, and etc. I probably should add another um, another shade of green here as well. Okay, so impressionism, optical mixing activity, taking varieties of the same color and stroking them loosely onto your paper as you're focused on your still life or picture and thinking about your mood, how you're feeling at the moment. Okay? Impressionism. I love it. So much fun. Okay. Oh gosh, I'm nervous. I'm going to have to rip this off because I do want to finish this piece. So I'm going to just, this is my wonky, the wonky way I'm doing my thing, but I'm going to let it over here so that I can actually finish that after the video. Okay. Moving right along. Moving right along. We're on page 15. All right, page 15. We're going to continue with Impressionism. And we're going to do a little study or practicing in implied texture. Okay, one of the elements of art, elements of art is texture. So we have actual texture, like when you touch a painting and it feels rough or soft, or there's implied texture where whatever you've created on your paper gives the appearance that it has some kind of texture, but does it? No, it doesn't. So for this particular project, all you're going to need is a pencil. Where are you, pencil? There you are, a pencil, okay? You're also going to need a picture, and you're going to be paint, uh, drawing a picture of a, we should write this down, a furry friend. And I'm not talking about grandpa, okay? <laughs> no, I'm talking about an animal, a dog, preferably, but if you must, a kitty cat is okay as well. And um, so what you're going to do is you're first going to use your pencil and I'm going to use my device. Now, if you actually have a photograph hanging out, that's fine too, but you're going to need to use um, a picture or a reference. This is not really going to work with a still life per se because your dog's going to move or whatever. Um, so I'm going to use the doggy that my friend just got, her little puppy. She's not, she's not named yet. So cute, huh? Okay. And what you're going to do, you guys, is you're going to flip your camera upside down. Now, I had to lock it on my screen, right? Now, you're going to be drawing your furry critter, your furry friend, upside down, okay? And you're like, why, lady, why? Why, lady, why? Because when you are drawing things upside down, your brain doesn't give you negative talk about, oh, that doesn't look right. That is not right. That, that doesn't, that, that eyeball's not right. Uh-uh, it doesn't do that. Mm. What happens is you're, <clears throat> you're more free to draw. Wrong pipe. You're free to draw without that negative self-talk, okay? All right, so what you're gonna start by doing is you're gonna draw in the face. Okay, I'm gonna start with the nose and then the eyes and the ears. Okay, here we go. It is a little hard, I had to brighten it up because, um, because it was hard for me to see. Here's the little cutie nostrils and the round, round, shiny nose. It looks like my nose upside down, just kidding. Okay, and then the eye is right here. And of course you're drawing, you know, much smaller. I'm drawing quite grande. And like so, this one's definitely in the shadow here. It's hard to see. And then there's that highlight coming off the eye. 
Okay, and then her bow is right here. Cute little bow. Like that, and a little heart. Are you gonna take your time for this? Well, of course. This is super duper exercise with drawing. And most of the exercises in the CQJ have been excellent drawing exercises for you two guys to practice honing your skills in illustration. Okay. All right. And then the ears are kind of like draping over here. All right. Uh, and then it cuts off. I'm going to pretend it's not cut off. And then the other ears like over here. And that's that. Okay, and then his, her, it's a she. Her little foot is up there and coming down and it kind of connects to the ear. Again, I'm comparing here uh, where things go. Okay, so I have my, eye, my eyes, nose, ears, and you know, the bow. Most of you guys, your dog has a bow too. <laughs> I don't know, just kidding. Okay, so then after you have your main facial features in, the next step, you guys, is you're going to draw, you're going to actually draw the fur using strokes with your pencil. But you want to make sure that you're drawing in the direction the hair or the fur is growing. Okay? That's really, really important. Um, also, I want you to go with the flow with the impressionism style, okay? So you're just going with the flow here. Okay, starting with underneath the nose here, it's kind of um, has these, <clears throat> has these little, kind of the hair is kind of bumping like that. Like a little, like a little mustache. Okay, and we're just gonna keep it going here. Now, is this going to take some time? Yes, it will. Am I going to do the whole thing right now? No, I'm not. But the main thing is that I'm drawing the hair that's in the same direction that it's growing on my picture. Okay? This is super duper important to get to really uh, capture the the texture of this cute pepperuno. Could you go back and add shading and all that later? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, it's kind of harder to see over there. And then it kind of comes up. All right, impressionism implied texture. Okay, the little ponytail, the flow is right here. I'm just going with the flow here as I look at my photo. Now, is this going to take some time? Absolutely. Did I just say that? Absolutely. But I just want you guys to know, you know, good art does take time. Okay. Oh, hi, butterfly. Going to join us for some CQJ action. Okay, so later I'm going to go back and kind of shade in the nose and leave some of that area highlighted. Okay, and like so, but you get the idea. You're going to draw in the hair. Make sure you're following the way it's growing on the photo. You're going to be loose as well. Why? Because we're practicing impressionism okay okay that is our furry friend impressionistic piece of artwork page 15 moving right along oh yeah moving right along oh yeah all right page 16 to the post impressionism this must be the dry one this must be the better one my markers really matter. It really does matter. Okay, post. 
This is after Impressionism, and it's the French movement. And um, they believe that um, artwork is just more than just a passing emotion in, in, in the moment, people. It's more than that, okay? Jeez Louise. Oh, um, so they kind of brought back more formality. And this was, it kind of is broken actually into um, two parts. The first half, post-impressionism, is really about detail. So we're going to focus on that. For the first half of the post-impressionism is about detail. And we're going to practice a style that was drawn to us by Georges Seurat. And his um, artistry came from pointillism. So we are going to practice using pointillism. Oh, I hope I spelled that right. I don't know if there's two T's or two L's. We'll find out. Oh, I think there's two L's. Well, you'll, I don't know. Any weasel. Okay, so pointillism, ladies and gentlemen, is kind of like impressionism that we practiced, the one I threw the painting down there, but it's not. Uh, pointillism is highly tiny, tiny dots. And he's doing the same, or they're doing the same thing where they're putting different colors of dots near each other. To, and then when you back up, you get a different kind of color. Um, but it's super duper dupey time consuming, okay? Super duper time consuming. Um, just in his, uh, George's Surratt's 10 year um, artistry time period where he was creating art, he only made seven paintings. Seven, okay? Um, so what I want you to do for this piece of artwork is you're actually going to draw a frame on your paper and your frame is going to be like one finger by one finger. Okay. One by one by one by one. Now I'm going to make mine bigger so you can see, but I want you guys to go with one finger by one finger by one finger because you're going to see it's going to take some time. Now, if you want to go larger, dude, rad, go for it. It just means that you have more time to create your artwork. Um, and basically what I'm going to ask you to do for this piece of artwork is you're going to need to use markers or colored pencils. Okay. And so you're going to start with pencil and you're going to, we're going to create a very basic landscape together. Um, and so that landscape is going to be five lines and we're going to start at the bottom of our page and move up going across the page. And we're going to start with more diagonal lines, okay? So we're going to do one very diagonal. I'll try to draw a little darker for you guys to see, kind of super diagonal, right? The next one I'm going to overlap here. And it's, again, going to be very diagonal. One, two. And then the third one is going to be a little less diagonal. And then even less pronounced and at the top, the last one, even less. Okay, so what you're going to do now with your landscape is you're going to be dotting, okay? And you're dotting, let me grab some pens here. Um, depending on what time of day you are going for, for your particular piece of artwork, is going to be the colors you choose. And your colors should kind of be neighbors on the color wheel, okay? So I'm going to start at the top with my, um, with my sky, and I'm going to begin by dotting. I'm really just going to do a little small piece here for you guys because... This video will be like four hours if I show you all. And I don't have four hours to do pointillism right this moment. Okay, so you're going to be doing your pointillism overlapping your dots till there's no white space. Okay, this is gonna go all the way across that landscape of the sky, I'm sorry. The lamp is down here. Okay, I'm going back and forth. This would be a good time to put on a movie and dot, dot, dot to your delight. Dot, dot, dot to yo delight. Okay. Bunga, langa, bunga, langa, bunga, langa, bunga, langa, bunga, langa, bunga, langa. 
Now, if you wanted it to get darker in one area, then you would add more dotting in that one area. Okay. As you can see, oh, beautiful. It's looking good already. So then when I get to my landscapes, I want to make sure that these different shapes are different colors. They don't, they can be varieties of similar color or they can be completely different colors if you want. And if you want to go with earthy, then you would use earthy colors. But you know what? It really, 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 really is up to you, Scooby-Doo. Um, okay. So I'm just going to do a tiny bit down here as well. La, 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 ba, 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 pointillism, 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 pointillism. Super cool. All right. And do, 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 all right, moving forward, post-impressionism, using detail, okay? All right, page 16, post-impressionism, tons of detail, boom shalaka. Page 17 in the CQJ, okay. This is going to be the second half of post-impressionism. Okay, and this is the second half, and um, this this second half half of post impressionism has to do with emotions. Okay, we're kind of going back into the in the moment, how we're feeling in the moment, and kind of dropping those main rules, um, um, conformities, and all that stuff in art. And uh, the person who stands out big time for this particular back-end era of the post-impressionism is the lovely Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh made about 800 paintings and 800 plus drawings in his career. And um, for those of you who know, he uh, definitely had some um, demons in his mind and, um, and he was able to show his outlet through his amazing paintings. Um, he disliked realism. He wanted to share the healing power of nature. And so that's why a lot of his artwork ha it has to do with um, landscapes and flowers. But not all of them. He does some interiors as well. Um, so for this particular project, I'm going to ask you guys to draw your ideal backyard. Okay? You're like, what? Yep. Draw your ideal backyard. So when you're an adult and you have your own house, I want you to think about what would fantasize what would be your favorite backyard, okay? Um, is that, does that mean that you can overlook the ocean? Are you in the middle of the forest? Are you in the middle of Tokyo? Um, it just depends on what you visualize to be your Omega backyard, okay? So that's the first thing I want you to ponder. The second thing you're going to do is once you have your sketch down, so for example, um, let's say that um, my ideal backyard is that, um, just for fun, um, <laughs> La, 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 I would love to have a pool. So maybe I have my pool here. You know, with my little, you know. And again, it doesn't have to be super detailed. It just is going to be really up to you. And the steps going down into the water. Okay, and I love, oh, so much love redwood trees. So I would definitely throw in some redwoods back there in my ideal backyard again. All that texture, that bark. I love the spongy bark. So amazing. Okay, and then way back here, let's say we have like one of those fences, like, I don't know, it's just gonna be a real fancy fence. This is what I want when I grow up. <laughs> okay, I've got that, that transparent, fence going on. Boom. Okay. 
And then way back here um, is the ocean. I can I have an ocean view. Oh yeah, ocean view. Okay. All right. Now, is that perfect to perspective? No, but it's 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 fine for what we're doing. Okay. So what you're going to do once you have your ideal backyard drawn out, you're going to draw the horizon and sky. I'm also going to include my water too because I kind of went too high. You're going to draw the top part of your picture with one variety of color and then all of the things that are in the foreground in the front that are near us which is the bottom pretty much half of the page you're going to color in the complement of that color so we talked about color theory way back when i think in like ex assignment two or three so this you're going to be coloring your picture with complementary colors okay so coloring, now if that means crayons, um, fine, I'm okay with that. Colored pencils, great. Uh, markers, awesome. Paint, check, okay. Coloring with compliments. Oops, forgot the R. Okay, we're coloring with complementary colors because if you take a look at most of um, Van Gogh's art, he uses complementary colors big time, okay, to really express his emotions in the painting. So if we look at the cafe terrace on um, the plaza, I think, de Forum, and I'll show that right now, boom, beep. Um, as you can see, he uses varieties of blues and oranges primarily in that painting, which really, really looks amazing, um, and it captures his emotion, okay? And it brings color harmony. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna decide on which complementary colors that you would like to use for this painting. So um, if you look at the color wheel here, okay, say I'm gonna go with red and green. You could use a variety of red oranges, reds and red violets along with green yellow, green, and blue, green. So you're, you, you are kind of going over to the neighbor a little bit, right? Or you could use pinks, etc. okay? So if you have your oranges and blues, you're gonna use like darker blues, lighter blues. You could even incorporate the next door neighbor just a tiny bit, but really focus on those compliments for this piece of amazing Van Gogh-esque post-impressionistic piece of artwork. I will say next time I'll draw that horizon line lower. Okay, anyway, it's okay, it's all good. Draw your ideal backyard. Page 18, yeah, last page for the week. Last page for this week. We're moving into expressionism. Oh, oh. Express yourself, hey, 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 hey. So if you want it right now, you can show me how. Okay, expressionism is the 1900s, guys. Woo, yeah. So expressionism is all about boom shalaka, all about abstract art, ab to distract. Okay, and the founder of abstract art is Vasily Kandinsky. I didn't say Vaseline, guys. I said Vasily. And that's spelled actually with a W, okay? He was the founder of abstract art and created amazing abstract pieces in his career. Um, his colors convey emotions. He drew, painted things distorted and exaggerated. Um, there, the, this style of artwork is all a hundred percent about conveying your feelings. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do for this particular piece of artwork is we're going to practice something called, I don't even know how to say it right, but I'm going to write it down for you and I'll look it up here. But basically what this word means, um, if I can spell it right as I'm talking to you, this weird word right here. Okay, 
Synesthesia? I don't know. <laughs> My decoding skills. Bad teacher etiquette. Um, but what this is, is people who have this, it's um, they're able to, when they hear music, they see different colors. When they um, hear emotion, they see different objects or colors. Um, it's quite an interesting thing that some people actually have. So we're going to practice this. And so um, what I'd like you to do for this project, this is definitely very experimental, people, is you're going to use whatever color choices you'd like, um, have a bunch ready and out ready to go. And, um, and so when, you're going to need your device because I want you to listen to some music, or if you have a record player or a tape deck, <laughs> um, and you're gonna listen to a genre, okay? Don't just play like your favorite song over and over again. I want you to actually play an actual genre of music, um, whatever genre you want. And as you're listening to the music, you're going to whatever colors come to mind when you're hearing the music, you're going to start making your artwork. Now, what is that going to look like? Well, it's up to you. Are you going to make circles? Are you going to make um, detailed scribbles? Are you going to create shading? Are you going to write words? Are you going to create um, chopped off uh, like parts of hands and parts of faces? It is completely up to you. However you're feeling with the music, the music has to be there. You're going to create your piece of abstract art, okay? Abstract, meaning we can't decode anything from reality and real in the picture. We might be able to see some things like, oh, there's an R. Oh, there's a fingernail. Oh, there's a, what up, fill in the blank. But for the most part, it's going to be completely filled with interesting shapes, lines, designs, colors that represent the genre of music. So what I'm going to ask you to do is at the bottom of your page, really small, just uh, jot down the genre of music that you used. And I want you to definitely listen to the music for, I'd say, a good 20 minutes. I know that seems like a long time, but in order to really feel out the music to see if you have this scientific term, woo, science, then um, I want you to just really kind of feel it out, okay? Oh my goodness, we made it through the week. We made it through the week. Oh yeah, we made it through the week. So we got 18, expressionism, 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 70, post-impressionism, 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 backyard, backyard, 16, post-impressionism for the first half, detail, oh my goodness. And page 15, impressionism, furry friend, upside down, furry friend, upside down. And last but not least, we have our impressionistic painting. Yes, loose, loose strokes, variety of color, and <laughs> there it goes. And how are you feeling? How, what's going on in that heart of yours, okay? All right, that's it, you guys. I hope you're doing really, really good. I hope you really enjoy all these five activities in a CQJ, okay? It's looking pretty cool, guys. Can't wait to add even more to this book that's going to be a keepsake forever.